It's the weekend. It's mailbag. It's the long bank holiday weekend. Four days off. Amazingly, but unfortunately, it's also the return of the Toffees uh, down at Bournemouth on Saturday. But we won't talk about that because it's mailbag. So we don't really want to talk about Everton too much. I'm joined this week by Dave and Pete. Uh, thanks to Warren for the filling in for me last week and doing a wonderful job again. And that leads us straight into our first question from Stephen. So after Warren did an outstanding job of hosting Les in Les's absence, Christ, I can't speak. I've had like two beers. Um, who is your favourite <laughs> Everton substitute? Pete, come to you first on this. Favourite Everton substitute? Ooh. Which, I guess this can mean this can mean overall substitute or sub. I've taken it as substitute appearance, but if there's just someone who was a dead good sub, like maybe Iden Tal, let's say. Um, <laughs> I don't do even ma- know if he was a good sub or it was just like he was one of those players who never really played so were like just playing with you. He yeah, he scored an over a kick. Sure, he scored an <laughs> over a kick against Bolton once upon a time. I was going to say, um, Umani asked when he came on, was it was did he come off the bench against Bournemouth? Went Bournemouth. that one where and he and he came on and scored twice and and I think because of the build up for that where Cumin had obviously taken his locker off him. And there was like this thing where he was really. I mean, at at the time, I remember thinking, "Well, Umar's pretty shit." To be fair, so it was a bit. It was like, you know, it it was a bit different to see a manager be like playing a bit hardball. But he went a bit over the top, didn't he? When he started like being it. like a, he was. He kind of got to the point where it was like bullying, where he was telling him he couldn't eat with the team, and he wasn't allowed to tr- go in the gym when other first team players were there and stuff like that. And it was all a bit like <laughs> it went a bit far, didn't it? And then. But then he never Umar went that on. far, though, Pete. He never went as far as saying you can't eat with the team. He did. No, no, he did. He wasn't no, allowed. He, didn't. he wasn't allowed in the canteen when 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 the first team were there. That's because that's no Ronald Cumin. That's what Cumin did. One of the things in Finch Farm was when when Martinez was there. He had this oh, thing yeah, he where stopped you could... them all being together. Didn't I thought he? it was being just together, a locker. Yeah. No, no, no. He, he went further than that. So mm-hmm. Cumin actually brought in this thing where the first team was separated from everyone, whereas Martinez had it where. It was kind of like a little bit integrated, like the youth, even the youth team. There was like a, a um, you could see through in the canteen where they served the food. You could actually see through to the other side. So if you were the youth team, you could see like Seamus Coleman getting his dinner. But but Cuban did it completely the opposite way, where he completely shut off the first team from everyone. And then, as I say, when when Nias had his locker taken off him, he was banned from the from the first team canteen. And if he wanted to go in the gym. He wasn't allowed to go in the gym if any first team players were there. So he he, he really went over the top, overboard with him, and he was obviously trying to force him out. And and the ass was of the opinion that like I'm on sixty grand a week, I'm going nowhere. And then, but then the fact that the ass come on scored them two goals, and like basically saved Cumin's job for another few weeks. I thought that that was a that was a good one because I think by that point as well, everyone thought the Cumin was a bit of a prick. So yeah. it was a uh, it was like two fingers up to him. So that's got to be up there for me, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That we were all on the turn at that point with Cumin, weren't we? I think we'd all realised yeah. he was a massive knobhead. Um and yeah, we were all sort of like didn't really like him. So I don't think my head has ever hurt so much at a goal celebration as when he scored that first one. Just because of the whole build up to it and the fact that he had been so off with a player, which was you know, it was bang out of order. I know these players are on good money, but if you know, no matter how much you're on, if you're going into your workplace and that's happening to you. It's just, it's not good, is it? It's horrible. No. So anyway, I'll, I'll quickly just pick up on that for a minute before we like, I get Dave's thing on this. But doesn't that just show how scattergun and stupid Everton have been? Isn't that the perfect yeah. encapsulation that Martinez, you know, as shit a manager as he was, in my opinion, he had this feeling around the club where it was inclusive. Everyone, like, like you say, you know, the youth team. Sort of trained in sight of the first team. It was a very togetherness thing. Yeah. Then to go to Cumin. Yeah, who had a different, you know, totally different sort of football and style as well, but also had a very sort of closed off, no, we're the first team, quite aloof kind of thing. It just shows how shit the club's been run, doesn't Mm. it? (laughs) Just in that one little managerial change. Just. Yeah. Mm. The other thing Martin has had was um, he had, because I went down there, basically, my my nephew was, he was training with the, you know, with like the youth set up at the time. So we had like a bit of a tour when he was when he was doing his you know, we went down to watch training and that's where he, he shown us they showed us like the thing about the um, canteen and everything. And one of the things that Martin has had as well on the walls, he had this like sort of wall of fame, if you like, and it was all all of the 
the, like the cup wins and the cup winning captains right, and all yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And then he had a, he had an empty frame at the end of it. That's and it was right, a bit yeah. like so yeah. Yeah. And it was like your you know, it's your job to to fill this frame basically, which I quite like. But apparently Cuban, one of the first things he did was he took it he took that down. I'm su- he I'm surprised. I'm surprised Smart Cuban man. never put a picture of himself with the European Cup, not to be honest. <laughs> he probably did. When he's got the Everton kit, when he swapped, when, when we played his team. Oh, we that. played Feyenoord. Yeah. 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 Oh, Christ. Oh, God. Mm. I'll tell you what, we, we've had some good times, though. Um, <laughs> Dave, what's your favourite substitute or substitution? Um, I've, I've got two here. What, one good and one bad. I'll go to the bad one first. Tobias Linderoff, who was utter shite but I remember when, when he came to us people were saying oh we've signed this brilliant Sweden midfield player he's captain Sweden and all this and he was oh shite he was a proper crab uh, wasn't he yeah I think Danny Williamson kept him out the side and everything he, he, <laughs> was, he was woeful John Oster was fucking next you know ahead of him on the bench Um, yeah he, was, he, he wasn't good at all him but you know, you, you looked at him and thought he's got the part him like he, he was tiny, wasn't he? He was a little bit feeling. I thought he's gonna be a little ted of him. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. he just turned out to be we paid he, a few quid did, for him as well. Did Joe Royal sign him? No. Or Walter Smith. I think it, it was, was Walter Smith. It was, it was Walter. Walter. It was Smith. Walter. Oh no, Joe Royal was thingy, wasn't he? Klaus Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking I'm, I'm hell, being yeah. very I'm doing a disservice to uh, Scandinavia there, getting a Norwegian and a Swede mixed up, but we'll gloss yeah. over that. Oh man, yeah, that they were dark times then. But they were the time when we never lost a derby within well, we never lost a derby under Joe, did we? It no. was if it's four no. years that he was with us, we didn't lose one one derby. Um do most of them no. But the the one that I thought I'm I'm gonna put as one of my best subs probably up there was James McFadden. Mm. Because if people think, Oh yeah, he started every game he didn't. He was on the bench a hell of a lot of times. And when we got him in from Motherwell. Motherwell, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and again, was this Moyes? Yeah. Moyes, yeah, because he came, yeah. R- Rooney was still there, wasn't he? He was the Rooney Scottish Rooney, was, wasn't um, he? Yeah, it's Scottish Rooney, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I just thought he was, um, he, he, he took time to draw his way in, to be fair, like, he wasn't starting every week or anything like that, but he, he was one, he's one of those enigmas, because he was one of those players that initially wasn't great for us, but he was amazing for Scotland. I remember when he went to the France, he scored a winner away of France. It was an absolute peach. Oh yeah, he just he just scored like goals for fun for Scotland, and then um, he started playing really well for us. And he had he full of tricks. Um, it was weird because he was a winger that wasn't fast, that which is a, yeah. which was a bit mad for me. I'd never thought he was quick, but then every goal he scored was a belter. Yeah, I mean the the one most people would remember is that Charlton one, which effectively you know when we. They equalised and we went up the other end and scored in the last minute. But I remember when he scored against Fulham and it was the same game where James Beattie scored that chip, if you remember yeah. that. McFadden went up to the second half. McFadden scored. It was a ridiculous goal on the volley. Um, he also scored at Old Trafford as well, I think, when we got a one-all draw as well. And then randomly came back, um, if you remember that, for yeah. about four or five games. It was similar to when uh, Gravison come back. Where they just came back for a few games and it was like, I'll come back and have a game, lads, and then get off. Um, he, he came back at the age of 30 odd. Um, and yet, so he, he's mine. I think it's a bit of an um, obscure one, to say, to say the least. But he's also a really nice fella as well. Yeah, that's a that's a cracking shout, though. I think I think mine favorite favorite overall substitute has got to be Alan Harper for me. He was like the the ultimate utility player for that 80s team. He was like He's definitely one of the unsung heroes. Um, and yeah, he was just one of those players who could come in and sort of play anywhere. Um, and in that what team... Decade, you... What decade was that in, Les? What's that? What decade was that in? Taking you back to the 80s, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> the, main man, the main man's back. But Warren, take, Warren, take a seat, lad. <laughs> Warren's only a kid, isn't he? Um, yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, so, I mean, especially then because you only had one substitute as well. So it was probably quite handy to have one that could play anywhere. It's nuts to think, isn't it? That you could only have one substitute. It makes you think, like, players should be ashamed these days because how fit must you have been then? If you were just any of those 11. They were all on the island smoking, like in the changes and stuff. 
just went overweight in the week. I was going to say, look, I mean, I, I, I was kind of going down like the sort of individual substitute appearances that kind of kind of stand out to me rather than a player who was a specialised substitute. But like, I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten about Stephen Naismith against Chelsea oh, when he God, came on yeah. and scored. Scored a perfect hat trick, didn't he? Yeah, like, that's right, yeah. The was, one, two, it, it three. Was, yeah. yeah, and it was like the best hat trick I've ever seen in my life. Oh, it was he unreal, wasn't it? terrorised them. And at the time, yeah, was... Chelsea had a really good side as well. Yeah. And he just absolutely terrorised them. So I always think he was good. He was actually good coming off the bench. Naismith, he, he was, was such he a was good finisher. A good, great finisher. Really yeah. underrated him. Uh, but but again, he's he was like that type of player where it took him a little while to get settled in at Everton. And like, uh, but the fans kind of, he was one of them where I think the fans were getting a bit frustrated with him. And he just worked his ass off and like got through it. And once he'd sort of got his foot in the door a little bit with the with the Evertonians, and we we kind of realised that he was one of them grafters that we all love. He just went he just went up a level, mm. and and like and that that actually against Chelsea, I just remember like he was absolutely unbelievable that day. And I yeah. say, I he think came I, off the bench, he scored a perfect I, I think a million people have heard us say this many times when we went up to Hearts to see him. A few years yeah. ago, if anyone wants to listen to it, the interview's still there because it's pretty. It was a, a lot about um, Martinez and all that, and how much we love the club. It's it's a good listen if you ever want to um, give it a go again. Cause it was in, well, it was just after he left, so it would have been what 2018, 2017, something like that. The other thing I was thinking as well was like, how many times did you get? I'd say late nineties, early noughties, when we had young players that come on, and everyone who was with you at the game would say. He's the one him, you know. He's he's gonna be amazing. I've heard he's yeah, boss. Chadwick. I went to watch John O'Connor, Chadwick, Bill Jevons, and yeah. Michael Branch. Those yeah. three were meant to be like Messi, Javi, <laughs> and Ronaldinho or something like that, mate. And I remember remember they come on and sitting there thinking, and I was only like ten or twelve. I remember looking at thinking, I fancy myself this I fancy myself, you know, to be a professional footy player. <laughs> Did Michael Branch like turn into like Britain's fucking Ross yeah, Kemp we, or something? Probably won't go into that, but yeah, I think uh, he, he did some naughty stuff. I think he's back at Everton now. He's back at Everton. Is he? I'm sure he's working with the youth team. I'm sure he is. Michael Branch. Michael Branch. I'm sure. Yeah. Have a, no. Google it. Well, I mean, to be, fa- to be fair, Walter Smith had him off big time, didn't he? Throwing you him were on about Baxter. Baxter came back, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, no, no. I've look, Michael Branch. I'm sure. I'm sure that Michael Branch. It might be something to do with Everton the community or something. He's he's got some. I'm, I might be. I'm sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure. You'll be I'll right. Look. Yeah, you'll be right. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, just just final one on this then. So my my other my thing for the because I initially thought your favourite substitution was uh, Daniel Amakachi ninety five semi final got yeah. to be yeah. wasn't even a substitution. Unreal. Story. <laughs> he subbed himself on. Yeah, just just <laughs> took himself. On. Yeah. Don't even think anyone calls him on Makachi. They just say that fellow who's himself yeah. on. Um, <laughs> I think so. I think for pure weirdness, Tom Davis coming off of Hammers Rodriguez, <laughs> which was there. Uh... And then I've got to defer to Mike Blakey's favourite of that image of Cenk Tosin coming on for Solomon Rondon. It's like <laughs> it's pure distilled oh, Everton yeah. striker problems was in that, a picture. Was that when the uh, Rondon's ex-wife was chasing after him around the pitch? Oh, that, no, was, that, that was that was Enna Valencia. Um, Valencia, oh, that yeah. Was, that was Enna yeah. Valencia on international. You know what? He blagged. He blagged an injury, didn't he? He, he paid his money. He an injury. Yeah. Jumped on the back of an ambulance. <laughs> we were getting battered. We were getting battered in the derby. I think it was like three 0 He came on with about forty minutes left, just after the fit, the second half started, and it was the best performance I've ever oh, seen man, from a player. He was man of the match, wasn't he? He was incredible. He came yeah. on. He was all over the place, and I was thinking. Keep him, keep him now, and then <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was just substitutes and substitutes. Boss to think of though, like in itself, you could keep... probably you probably write a book on on the uh, on subs. You got to talk about Moise Keane as well at Old Trafford when um when Ferguson was the manager when I, when Dunk Big Dunk was the manager and he brought him on and then took him off like ten minutes later. Do you know <laughs> <he> what? Like... <laughs> I, I fully back Duncan Ferguson for that. A, be, a, because Moise Keane's shite. I'm not, I'm, yeah. And no one will convince me otherwise. In fact, in the week, there was... Um, I, I tweeted about this. Someone put up a um, a video of um, Umar Nias playing an absolute killer through ball to Ghana Gay, who slotted. <laughs> no, really, it happened. 
Um, <laughs> and it just it just made me think the shit that Umani Ass got, and then the fact that the, the amount of people who tried to make out that that ball to Walcott at Watford was a pass when it was just <laughs> a was scuffed a shot. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> mate, come on. It nearly broke Twitter that, you know, the amount of the amount of arguments and scraps with that. <laughs> yeah. People were talking about meeting them at ALRs a, a, a and everything to sort themselves metal. out. That's Absolutely. because we were still under the impression that Moise Keane was talented at the time. So we thought he can't he be that talented. bad. You know what I mean? He's, st- he's, he's still our player, isn't he? <laughs> he might well be, you know. I have no idea who plays for us now, to be honest. I know. <laughs> um. So next we'll go to yeah. So we're speaking about Mike, and his uh, he he loves the picture of Tosin and Rondon. So we'll go to his question next. Either way, do we shake hands with Dice at the end of the season and go our separate ways? What a big question that is for Mailbag. Bloody hell! Well, we've we've hinted at this, Les, haven't we, in recent weeks? Um, yeah. I think I think Dave, like, we can't talk of... about this. Well, no, that's the thing. It's like how many times we we mentioned it. People were like chasing us when we sort of started talking about it so early, saying like the alternative of if we were to go down, would you keep him? And if yeah. we stayed up, do you sort of give him more time and all that? Um, so I suppose someone's asking the question, Les, we can actually give a definitive opinion now, can't we, mate? Yeah, ra- it's been ra- asked. Yeah. Ra- rather than us developing the question ourselves, it's being asked. You're allowed to talk about it now. <laughs> Um, I think, and I'm sure we you said this to me privately, so I'm going to out you a little bit here. But I think we generally both agreed that if he keeps us up, you 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 look in the summer, you look around, and I would lean towards <clears throat> saying goodbye, Sean. Um, now there's so many different circumstances around that. I think it's difficult to say either because we've got so many issues in that squad. Aside from everything that's going on off the pitch, I still think you get quite a hypersensitive fan saying you keep him because I think I think a lot of people refer back to when he first came in on that Arsenal game to where we are now. Yeah, and I do agree with them when they say there are very few other managers that could have kept us in that condition. Just give him what he's like. I don't think he's a great manager, and I don't think he's a great motivator. In fact, I don't think he's a good manager at all. <laughs> <laughs> but he came. But he he, he was he was stop, the man sitting on the needed, fence, Dave. <laughs> yeah, he, he was the man that needed. He was the fella that needed to be there for those particular circumstances. I'd hope that's not where we're looking at in the summer. But we stay up. How much? How different are things going to be over the summer? I can't see things being much better. So from that point of view, I think you 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 have to stay with him. And I'm not saying that in terms of he's kept us up. That old sort of like cliche. He's kept us up, so you've got to give him a chance, like Lampard did. I'm not saying it that way. I'm saying that if we're still in the financial position we're in, yeah, like, and we don't have the deduction things, I, I don't see you going to get this any better given the situation we're in. Yeah, I know that that that's a fair shout, actually. That yeah, but uh, Pete, what, what do you think? Yeah, I I think <clears throat> I'm not one of those who's totally oblivious to the fact that we probably should have done better in a lot of games. Um, but I just think, given the circumstances and everything that's going on, and things that continue to go on as well, because this isn't getting any, <laughs> this isn't getting any better next no. season. I'm telling you now, the 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 only thing we we need to do is stay in the Premier League when we move into Bramley Moor. That's it, and then hopefully that'll give us that'll let us kick on. But I I think we'd be taking a massive gamble. I know it sounds daft, because obviously you know I I get that people say about the type of football they don't particularly like it and things like that, and obviously we need to. We need to find someone who can actually train our forwards how to stick the fucking ball in the net. But, like, you know, I, I look at it and think, well, imagine if we took the gamble on another sort of playing it out from the back, tippy-tappy load of shite that didn't work with these players. I just don't think that there's a squad of players there who can play any differently. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't think there is. I, I just don't see how we can, as a collective unit, play any any differently because because they've proven over the last few managers, that if you try and ask more of them, they just can't do it and their, their heads yeah. fall off. So I, so no, I do they're... think that there's a lot to be said about keeping that type of tight, rigid formation and grinding out results and just like limping over the line to get Getting into ground. Draws in and hopefully, mm-hmm. yeah, and I think that's, an then ex- that'll us on. think that's an excellent point, to be fair, because it's the, it's the common trait we've had for many, many years with managers is they've sort of been so stubborn about themselves. I think I think Dice is stubborn, but ironically in the right sort of format for us. 
because that's exactly what we need and that's where we've sort of got with them. Hopefully, we're still talking about this in what six weeks' time if we're still in the league. If we lose someone, I'll be like, get him out. Oh, well, <laughs> this, this, I, you know, the other thing I would say is, who's to say he wants to stay? Yeah. And also, a, the other he's thing... He's a good thing, he will want to yeah. stay. The alternative side of that is to say, who else would take him in the Premier League? I don't think another yeah. Premier League club would take him. Yeah. Maybe Sheffield United. You, you just... Pete, you just sort of made me think of um, that bit on Subs Weekly, for anyone who listened to it, where they had this discussion on Amadou Onana. Um, and basically, the upshot was, he is a very good player and looks much better in the Belgian team because he's got players who he can pass to. And, he, and yeah. you know, who trusts him? He trusts them. And you kind of think that's that's a proper sort of like insight into this Everton squad, isn't it? And you looking at it that way for me, it's like okay, yeah, he's doing all right because it's it's a bad team, you know, it, it's not a good team at all. And as you say, you know who who would come who would come and do any any better yeah. job with with this with this team? Basically, it's not perfect. And I'm always of the opinion that I don't care who your manager is, if someone <laughs> if a better option becomes available. Yeah. Go and get them. It's like a player. If you know, if you've got a if you've got a good midfielder and an outstanding midfielder becomes available, you go and get them and you've been off your good yeah. midfielder. Same with managers. If someone better comes up, go for it. Get them, get them in, see what they can do. But as you're saying, the the position the club's in, is it just gonna be a managerial change that changes it? I don't think it is, is it? It's you know, well, the you thing, need the thing... better players in. Yeah, I mean, the thing I'd add on to that as well is Ancelotti came in and I was on cloud nine. Every yeah. moment he was with us, I was on cloud nine. If you take a step back and have a bit of perspective, look how difficult, look how poor that squad was. It took Carlo Ancelotti to get Everton to mid-table. Yeah. yeah. That, is the, that is the caveat I'd have on anybody who comes to this football club, you know. And that's why I can't go as far to say or I remain hesitant to say about Daesh or whoever follows him, even throw it in, I'll get battered for this, but Benitez, everybody that's came in, I think if you refer to one of the world's, one of the, the, the game of football, one of the greatest ever has come to Everton and only been able to get Everton in mid-table. Now, people, certainly fans of other clubs, will say, and Ancelotti can't be that good because when he goes to Real Madrid, anyone could go manage Real Madrid. Real, Real Madrid have proved that you can't do that because he's yeah. the one who's won the most most with them. Um, that's a bit of a short-sighted, and I think it's quite a dumb thing to say, really. Hmm. But for him to come to our club and have a squad that was better than it is now, let's face it, and only be able to get us to that position, I think speaks volumes about what Everton are and how you can maybe judge managers that we've got there. So I think I'm going up and down with Dice here, aren't I? But with with, with Dice now, I think, with the L, if, if, if Carlo Ancelotti could only get these to mid-table, Sean Dice must be doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, it's, and as well, Ancelotti had Richarlison, Ancelotti had James Rodriguez, he had Gilsey yeah. Sigurdsson, he had... You know, when you Luca Dean, you know, when you compare the players and the stand, you know, the stand, and when you think about it as well, all the players who are left are the ones who bottled it because we were second on Boxing Day and we absolutely yeah. just, just sunk like a stone. And then we've never really recovered from that second half of that season because no. it just the players just their heads went and then their heads have continued to go since. <laughs> so it's uh, I think it's only really probably this season where I think that obviously without the points deduction, we'd be comfortable in mid table. And I look at it and think, well, it's probably taken someone like Sean Dice to come in and just say, do you know what, forget all the noise, just just strip it right back down to basics. Yeah. And also the other thing about Dice as well, I'm a firm believer, if we were if we were comfortable, if we hadn't have, had those points taken off us, I actually think we would have played with more freedom. I think we probably would have seen more players coming up, coming up from the UTA. I think Dobbin would have had more minutes. I think Dan Juma would have had more minutes. Because I just think he's had to, he's had to be like more like defensive and more sort of grinding out points after points because he hasn't had the freedom he hasn't had the, the you know he hasn't been able to be comfortable um, yeah. so I think he's, I'm, 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 I am I'm get the criticism of him I really do and, and I think everyone's entitled to their opinion my opinion is just that for, for, for the moments and the position we're in 
I think we stick with him. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I'm inclined to agree. It's, it's just a very, very difficult question to answer. You said about the uh, the youth players coming in on a similar subject. The second part of uh, Mike's question is: Are we starting Coleman at the weekend? Yeah, <laughs> gotta be, hasn't it? Got to. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you'd have to be um, you'd have to be really careful with Coleman. I think, obviously, given his uh, the injuries and his age as well, um, I think that that goes against him. Where it's really unfair to talk about his age because I still still think he's got everything that he had. Which is hence the reason why he's our best right back. I still think yeah. he's comfortably our best right back. Um, that that being said, I th- I think to manage him, you have to look at who you're playing against. Now, Bournemouth are a decent side. Bournemouth are a good side. Um, I'm I'm thinking who I'd want to see Seamus against, not in terms of literal opposition, but in regards to what you need him to do. Um, in terms of you need him to bomb it forward and back. They're the sort of things that he won't bring to the table as much as he did. One criticism I've got is he can't cross a football either. Um, so I, I was class Tony Abbott, Miles Miles Best and James Coleman <laughs> crossing a football. Never thought I'd say that to him. Um, but yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, I think yeah, he's still our best right back. So if he's fit enough, and we're not playing three games in a week, which is like we will do soon, James yeah. has to start. Um, but I would add another thing to that. The person who should be on after him, I know that's not part of the question, should be Nathan Patterson, comfortably Nathan yeah, Patterson, so. should be learning his trade from Seamus Coleman and going back even further to that initial question about from Dice. that's one of the massive criticisms I've got is he seems to hate that lad. Almost literally, didn't he call him a bell end or something as well? He slapped him on the bottom, apparently. <laughs> that's quite not Who knows? Players. <laughs> um, gonna go on to a bit of an existential question from Tommy. Uh, at what point in your life did you realize Everton would break your heart relentlessly? From birth. No. <laughs> Do you know what? what? Seriously, though, no. for me, it's been pretty recent. Uh, so I think I think I still weirdly had some hope. When we stayed up again, well, when we beat, we didn't stay up against Palace, but when we beat Palace and guaranteed we were in the Premier League, even up until that point, I thought, you know what? We've got through that. We'll be sound now. We'll kick on a bit. We'll be better. I think, I think the end of Frank Lampard basically made me realize, nah, we are, we are terminally shite now, which <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a particularly optimistic person. But I think I've been unreasonably optimistic to go through so much Everton. I think they've been good for four years of my life or something like that. Mm. To go through that far and still think, do you know what? We might be all right. But I think it was, yeah, I think it was like Frank Lampard being really shit that kind of ended it for me and thought, no, do you know what? We're just always going to be crap. I think it was, yeah. I think it was at that point. <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was very early when... Um... Before answering that, I, I was very, I was very early in life when I thought Everton aren't going to win anything in my lifetime. Um, I think a lot of people would agree with that. I think it's an easy thing to say in the world at the moment, certainly. Anyway, even when like you go down to League Cup, um, the one that really, really got to me was when we should have got to the final with that game against Chelsea, um, yeah, yeah. where we should have at least got a draw down there, and that's part of the reason why I despise Tim Howard. Is because five, five foot two. You never um, mentioned it, Dave. Phillips. You've never, you never mentioned about like you don't like Tim Howard. Oh, mate, there's, there's a fucking long list, you know. I could, I, <laughs> do you know what, mate? I, I could go and I could go and like I don't know, walk into someone's house around here. I'm just outside, man, in a car, by the way, just to explain. My house is there. I'm not just someone's <laughs> random house. <laughs> um, He's outside Tim Howard's. <laughs> oh yes, but then what? Yeah. You're outside Tim Howard's house. <laughs> yeah. Outside Not again, Colorado. Dave. <laughs> Sitting here outside Colorado. We've got going uh, going back to the point that that game not getting to the final there. Um then I don't know, I thought that Chelsea final that we lost again because of Tim Howard. Um that that one got me because we went one nil off and I thought this is our day, this this is definitely our day. And 
it probably should have been had that gobshite just caught that ball that Lampard hits. Um, but the, the early times, I thought when them, them bastards winning that 2005 Champions League made me think my my life as an Evertonian is just not going to get to a level where I'll feel like they did. And I was really so, so jealous of friend and my mates there when I was in school. And I thought saying to them, you know, you won't appreciate this as much as we ever would if we'd done something like mm. this. And thing I still say well, that. The thing is as well, that, that, t- that team, to play that match against that Milan team, because that was a shit yeah. Liverpool team. Yeah. And I would hope every cop ice on earth would admit that was a pretty shit yeah, Liverpool was. team that won. But not only to win it, but to win it the way he did against that AC Milan team, which was a very good AC Milan team. The it's just like, started, like, yeah, you're right, and and you think, well, but, you know, what what's the point here? Because not only are we cursed, but we're cursed to have those fuckers next door to us. It's yeah. like that that um, Jersey dude that save that save against. Um, well, it's it's like, yeah. Oh, oh did, yeah. by the way, I've never I will, seen ne- I will like never be before. convinced that Shevchenko was anything but shite. By the way. <laughs> He was a he was a Chelsea, but that that moment there, I've never seen anything like that. That put someone's name on a trophy, yeah. Because he, it's not a save, it's not a save. It, it just hits out his arm. And it was bizarrely, Shevchenko being shit. That's all it was, mate. He could he, he he didn't even need to hit the ball properly. I look at that and start crying, right? But. Um, it's moments like that that fuck you up. Obviously, the um, the Villarreal game. Um, I think if you're going back the youngest time, I think probably when '98. Um, I was a little bit too young for '94, '95 time before we won the FA Cup. But you go to '98, and I thought, is this the best it gets as an Everton fan? And by and large. Mm. Sadly, it has been. It has been, hasn't it? Yeah. We're Jeez. celebrating. We're celebrating staying up <laughs> with with pitch invasions. I'm not slating our fans who did that because I was actually one of them who's doing oh, I, it. I love. Do you know what that that pitch invasion after Palace was brilliant. I loved it. But that's more because of what you feel about the club. Yeah, as there opposed was. To, there you was, know, there was. There was still. As I said, there was still sort of for me anyway. There was hope involved there because I thought we just got to get through this bit and we'll be sound. And we got through it. It was like. Thank fuck for that, right? Yeah. We're, we're going to be sound now. So I think there was a lot of... Clean slate, clean slate, clean slate. Yeah, we, we, you know, we said at the time, didn't we? It was like... Never it, again. Yeah, <laughs> and the difference between 94 and 98 was very much the difference between, what was that, 2021 and 2022? Can't even remember the years anymore. But, <laughs> you know, those two last day relegation escapes effectively were very much like 94 and 98 back to back. Because they were two very different atmospheres. Because when it happened against Bournemouth, there was no celebration. There was there was no feeling of like, oh, God, oh, get in and you know, little bit of euphoria. Because this is like a really nice feeling. It was just like, well, yeah, there's a lot of relief, but fuck me, we're terrible, Pete. Anyway, yeah. where, where, when did you realise that this <laughs> this was it? Well, I think I, I, one thing I would say though is that you know I know you touched on like the other the other lot across the park and you know what they and I I agree with you. Fully, you know this this shite that he come out with the other week saying this means more or that bollocks. I can tell you right now, you love all if that. Everton won a trophy, I haven't drank for five years. If <laughs> Everton won a trophy, I'd be missing for a month. You know what Easy. I mean? Like, like none of this, none of this, this means more bollocks. Could you imagine if you put if you if you swap if you could swap positions with them? Now, obviously, we'd have a great time. Could you imagine them having to go through the shit that we've been through in terms of over no. even over the last couple of seasons? Could you imagine mm. them going going like nearly thirty years without any trophy? Mate, like, they've got a they've got a Roy Hodgson era. He was there for about eleven months. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and you look at it and you, and and you know I'm I'm fit. You know, there's a lot to be said. Their standards are you know they they've got such big expectations and all that sort of thing. But like I've seen their heads fall off over finishing eighth. And like full on like burning shirts and like you know yeah and like absolutely losing their shit and I'm like Jesus could you imagine if they were in our position for just a season like that but I I always think about this about being an Evertonian is that like it's massively character building because you just don't have, like we haven't actually had anything to I've said this so many times about we're the only team in the football league who haven't had anything to celebrate since the last time we won a trophy no promotion 
no no cup win, nothing. Every other mm. team has had some moments of of, yeah. of of joy, of like accomplishments. Well, we haven't, but we still go every week, don't we? But um, I think the Fiorentina game was a real that 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 hurt me that because yeah. I remember the, the away leg was horrible. It was absolutely lasting hours rain. We were all like sort of stuck in this like cage basically and treated like absolute shit. Saw us get beat 2 0 and it was like and it was horrible. It was everything about it. And I remember that that that, that night as well, Fiorentina were unbelievable. And then yeah. and we just didn't show up. But then we get back to the home leg at Goodison, and it's the best atmosphere I've ever been in. In uh, probably Bournemouth was up there, like w- when when that goal went in. But yeah, th- I can't even describe what happened in that ground when Arteta scored that equaliser. <laughs> the ground was shaking. It was. It felt like the, it, the thing was going to fall down. It's like a cliche, isn't it? There's some commentators say that the ground shaking, but that night it, oh, it genuinely, it genuinely was. was. It was mad. And the other thing about it was, it was like every single stand was screaming and like de- singing. Diff- What's Dave doing? I can't see him. But um, every <laughs> every different sa- uh, stand was like singing a different chant yeah. and all that. It was mad. But then for us to, to lose, after going through all that, we had that like sort of, you know, Gaza 90, Euro 96 moment where Anna Chaby just stretches and, and the ball goes across goal and he just can't get there. And we battered them at 2-0. Fiorentina were on the ropes. They were at yeah. their fans and shut up. They just look like rabbits in the headlights, and they were like, "Oh my god, what are we in here?" So for us to mm. then go out on penalty, I think was it Yakubu? Yakubu missed. He supposed the penalty. He did it on own arm, didn't he? And he stepped up and like it wasn't did, that did he... bad. I remember. So it was, it was down the park and the shootout, and, and like we were right behind it, and it it's like he did he, he did like take a little little step up, little, but he hit little it, stu- stammer, he hit it yeah. well though. But it just curled and curled and curled and curled and curled and hit the post. Yeah, it was it was going in for about ninety five percent of of like the trajectory of the ball, and it just hit the post. Yeah, and, and then Jack Yelka, Yelka missed the other one. Was it was Jack yeah, Yelka? But then one? at least at least yeah, Jack Yelka missed the other one. And then we, but I remember that moment thinking because I just remember that season we were scored, we were playing like proper lovely football as well. Yeah. I remember Osmond scored that belt. It was against Larissa, was it? Oh, and it was like yeah, that, that's that one of my favourites ever. That. You know, we had Pienaar, Kale, Osman was on, on fire, Yakubu was banging goals in. And I just looked at that team and thought, it's all clicking here. And it yeah. was like, and then to go out like that was devastating. It was that 2008, wasn't it? And then yeah. we had... You need to remember, though. You've got to remember that was only to get into the quarters. Yeah, but we would have... But I think we would have won it. Was that, was it, was it no, we wouldn't have won it. We would not have won that. that. It, because we um, Zenit St. Petersburg... Zenit St. Petersburg we beat them. Won it, we, beat them we? we beat them. Twice in the group actually. stages, we beat them in the group stages. We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they went far. I don't think we I... won it. I think it was like, like, like the Benfica was still in it. It would have been a big ask for us to go and win it. Yeah, but I just, I just think I know people, people get, people get that emotional point though. Yeah, I completely get your point. When, when you go out to something that is so minute, you think. Our names, like I said, there about Liverpool. Yeah, you know when your names on the trophy, I completely understand that. Given the goal that Arteta scored as well, um, but who missed the sitters? Andy Johnson missed a couple of sitters as well, was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but Anna Shady, lot, I remember, many I remember that Anna Shady as well. Yeah, yeah, it was like the it was like the Gascoigne moment, wasn't it, for England yeah. against Germany that yeah. time? Yeah, but it, but again, but that that was the bit where I but I genuinely thought, you know what, that was a really really big opportunity that, and then. I mean, for Phil Jack Yelker, he, he kind of he made up for it the year after in the, the semi final against United, didn't he? When he scored the winning penalty, and I felt like yeah. that was like his talking about Euro '96 quite a bit here, but the Stuart Pierce moments, yeah, where Pierce was, yeah. the, the penalty against Spain, and that was like Jack Yelker to step up and take that penalty and put us through to the final. Um, was like you know that 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 sucks some bottle off from Jack Yelker. Um, but yeah, yeah that, I think I think. That when we when we were kind of at our peak and like you say, Dave as well. That's you know about the two thousand nine FA Cup final, and I remember it was Arteta, Jag Yelka, and Yakubu were all out for that final, and it was just like if we would have had them three, I think we would have won it. Myself, yeah. that's a big that, gone, that, that, that that Chelsea side was huge. Oh, mm. was it? It was a belter of a Chelsea side. Oh, mate, when you when you but, see, it, I mean. The, the the thing that got me as well, I remember asking him about this when we went to see him. Lescott got beat by Drogba when he scores that header. And like you were saying, says how how powerful Drogba because obviously Lescott's a big boy. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He said Drogba was just ridiculously powerful. And I remember yeah. him getting up, getting his head up like it was in about 
was it about 10, 15 minutes after we'd gone 1-0 up? Yeah. And it was one of those classic feelings, wasn't it, where you think, we've scored too early. A lot yes. of stupid, <laughs> things, stupid things to say, but you're like, you, you've just painted the game right now. And it's then like you, you've you developed a game of chess here it, by scoring it so early. Yeah. How do, Ever- how do Everton go on about playing? <laughs> and I think that also played into a lot of people who said Moyes always used to bottle it. Yeah. I think the you know flip, what I mean? Because it, it felt though, a little bit like that. The flip side of that is we go 1-0 down in the first minutes against Chelsea. We're like, oh, well, fuck that, you know. It's yeah, like, that's the it's like that. Pete Les, that, that's exactly what, exactly yeah. that question about it's when's like that time. The perfect, the perfect example of this for me is that FA Cup derby where they played like the in under twenty ones, basically, that... and we saw that team and we were like, "For fuck's sake!" Surely it was like, <laughs> Surely. "We can't go out against these, but we probably will." And it's like. Yeah, I think yellow that, that was the exact moment I gave up on us ever winning another derby match ever. Mate, that it, it, it fits, doesn't it? You think about the let me turn this on. You think about that Yelovich goal, right? Oh, that and was the, about uh, the similar final, yeah. The similarity, the similarity between that, yeah, and what, what we just talked about there with the 25 second goals, uncanny, isn't it? Really, yeah, <laughs> ridiculous. Christ, um, since we're talking about the Reds. Uh, Matt's asked, Liverpool could be appointing a manager who wears a captain's armband like Vito. There was an opportunity missed. Uh, what fashion accessory slash trend would you start if you were a coach? So I actually have first-hand experience of this. Um, <laughs> I I kind of became... <laughs> I kind of became renowned for wearing a book attack to the point where um, some of the shite in one of the opposition... Uh, I have I have a tendency to mouth off a little bit at the game, but I'm the manager, so I can. I'm not just a pair yeah. of gobbling off. It's, it's it's my kind of job to stick up for new players. But he, he came. I said something, and he came back and called me a bucket half bastard, which hands up, an absolutely brilliant <laughs> comeback. And I had I had nothing to say, but my captain, um, Lennon Barnes, God bless him if he listens, uh, actually chinned this lad and got sent off. <laughs> and then when he got sent off, I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He goes. We well, called you a bucket hat bastard. I wasn't standing for that. So, I mean, loyalty to the bucket hat. That's what you want from your I'm captain, isn't he? it? How old is he? The time of 17, 16, 17. <laughs> I thought um, you were going to say six or seven then. No, six, no 16, <laughs> I seven. Know, no. I was thinking, it, I it's, at, it's at the point where they're like the proper gobshites when they're playing football now at this point. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the bucket hat was mine and I would happily be called. The book attack bastard. I'm fine with that. You're going on my phone. I'm going to change your name in my phone. I think you should. I think everyone should. Um, But yeah, I I am eternally indebted to Lennon for that because it was not a proud moment, but it was a lovely moment that like one of your players was like just chin one of the opposition because he mouthed off to you. Can't argue with that. Love that. Stop an amateur footy, that means. Oh, brilliant. (laughs) Uh, Pete, what are you you thinking with this? Um. See, I don't know. I don't know how I, like what what I'd really go down. I definitely wouldn't go down the route of that that I, that was at the Wickham manager, and he went to QPR, like the one who who, who thought he was a rock star and that is was wearing like leather jackets and all oh, that. Oh God, yeah. But that was a bit odd. I mean, is fair it, enough. Is... I've got nothing wrong with people having their own style and all that, but I just felt that that was a bit like yeah. Hey, yeah. Look at me. Do you know? Yeah. I, Touchline I just found Denim that... as well. Touchline yeah. Denim was out. Like that. Uh, that Leeds manager. What's his name? The American one. <laughs> Got oh, oh yeah. Jesse, Jesse Marsh. Marsh. Jesse Marsh and his touchline denim. That needs to go. No chance. Yeah. That needs to go, yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. I, I mean, there's lots to be said about uh, Big Dunk had a good goal, didn't he? Because he had his he had his wristband on and Howard's watch. Suit and a sweatband. I like that. Yeah. Suit and a sweatband. I think I'd have to go somewhere along those sort of lines. I think Bobby Brown <laughs> Steve's used... shaking his head wildly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sentiment but... FC. Just fuck <laughs> off with the sentiment, will you? Duncan Bobby Ferguson, had, Bobby had Duncan Bobby Ferguson, had... absolutely nothing. And we're sitting here going, no, oh, look what he wore there. Oh, look, the club's in arm for all we're that. Talk, we're talking about touchline fashion, Dave. It was good luck. Literally well, talking about it. This, I'm not being funny. I bet you weren't saying that when we when we beat Chelsea and he was throwing ball boys around the, around the gaff. It was brilliant, that. That was a little insight into what Big Dunk was all about. And that was fucking the fast fact, and I loved it. Made the amount I'm of there, arguments that there. people had. Thinking that he should have been our manager was fucking outrageous. 
That was one. I would have preferred him over Benitez. Put it that way. I would have had him over Benitez. Couldn't have done any worse than that. That's not hard, is it? That's not hard. You'd have had your whiskey in front of uh, (laughs) Benitez. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right too. There, there we go. I'd be the first manager to have a dog on the touchline. Touchline dog. Touchline dog. Yes. (laughs) It's amazing. Imagine. I like that. like an extendable lead, so you could just like do the right back if you wanted. Well, that's just it, like, like I mean, just, like let the lead out a bit, do the right back, pull it back in. Yeah, or the ref. And if he started barking at you, know, just just have like a little, have a little keyword for him if you want him to kick off. <laughs> hey like, ref, hey ref, the dog just called you a cunt there. <laughs> What's the name of the dog? Cunt you, Martin. <laughs> Dave, what are you, what are you bringing to the party then? I just dresses. Uh, Mr. Testicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Imagine managers in novelty suits. The, the just full imagine, just imagine like shake like the serious <laughs> manager. Pep Guardiola's there, and you go up with that proper smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon anyone's going in for the hug after the game, or just just a brisk handshake? <laughs> <laughs> you have to walk out. Imagine going out to set cars, and it's just like. Just, just think, just think of any any random moment at all. You know, like if he's fuming at a fuming at a VAR situation, and he's like, oh, he's kicking off the ref, or he's telling him on the lads, go on, mate, go and train. Get you coming on the on the pitch, you're getting off the subs, anything like that, mate. Or if we would won, you know, in what the I mean? fourth, in the fourth officials here, dressed as Mr. <laughs> Testicles, <laughs> or oh, or if you got. Or if he got a red card himself and had to sit in the stands with a fucking <laughs> earpiece on. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely nailed it there. Mate, how the yeah. fuck did we end up with something like Mr. Testicles? <laughs> it was it was all down to Matt's question. Um, has anybody, I like the has idea anybody... that that's still that, I like the idea that that suit is still somewhere in the bar in like the, the depths of Goodison Park somewhere. I'd wear that, you know, to a stag do or something. I, I would openly wear that. It's it's one what of them where it'll just it'll just be in a storeroom somewhere, and someone's gonna t- like open the door, turn the light on, and just miss the testicles as they're staring at them on the floor. Next to Changi, like what are you two up to? It's Pixie's, like the mod- Pixie's the- face in the other corner, like Blair Witch or something. <laughs> the modern the, the modern day version of Mr. Blobby, isn't he? Oh, he's yeah, he's. Unreal. Right, we've got time for one more. Uh, we'll go with... I've got time for one more, one more before I end up in a cave here. Yeah, I know. The, the, the light's failing us. We'll quickly do this one from Stephen again. Uh, Bottom from Old New Borrow Blue. What is your favourite chant for a new current slash current Everton player? Uh, what is your favourite chant for an old Everton player? Well, any I've got ideas? loads. I've got, I've got loads for the women's team. Because this is the thing, though, we haven't got any chance for, for the men's team. Like, none of the, the, be- the not... better ones, terrible. Yeah, but we've got like, I mean, the, the women's team genuinely do. We have like at least two for every player. Like, some of them have got like four and five chance. So, like, Aurora Garley is just, she's got her own songbook, basically. So, it's, um, I'm trying to, th- I mean, do you want me to sing you one? We've got, we've got a boss one. We've got a boss one for Martina Piamonte, which got a few is. Minutes. Uh, Go for it, man. Yeah, so Martina Piemonte is. She's from Italia. She plays in royal blue. She's mates with Yaya, our number 22. Signed her from Milan. Now she lights up the ground. Oh, Piemonte, the best striker around. Da, 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 da. That's amazing. And it, and it bounces like. And then Aurora Garley's got like, it's like the old Carla one. So it's um, Yaya, fantastic. Yaya, yeah, magnifica. Oh, right, okay. Uh, you can hear whis- whiskey's trying to sing along here, but um, yeah, we've. I mean, to be honest, we've got like loads of them. Um, yeah, all of them, all of the all of the women's all all of the songs for the for the women's team are boss, but we don't really have any for the men's team, do we? No. So I I think that sounds amazing. Those songs are class. But I, I think thinking back, I, I just think of the like the near misses. So um, <laughs> the Daft Punk were up all night for Osman. That one was outstanding, but we never <laughs> sung it enough. <laughs> and Leighton Baines, the tune of You're So Vain, was just such... Oh, Leighton yeah, Baines, yeah. you'd probably think this song is about you. Yeah. What a fucking song. And it very yeah. rarely, if ever, got sung like at the match. It was always one of those yeah. underneath, like before the game ones, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I had one that sort of... 
I don't know. It had it had a day, but I think it got just like bumped off. And I'll 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 sing it. Um, I am the music man. I come from far away, and I can play. What can you play? I play the piano. Pia 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 my okay. name is Ethan Sal. I can play <laughs> and I can play. What can oh, you man. play? I play the Zed Gas. Best two. Love it. There was there was a Belter Arteta one as well. Where it was like uh Arteta, Arteta, Arteta. And you all did like a sombrero <laughs> dance, but you'd all stand like going, Oh good. Good days then. Was that our version of uh, City's um, deposit and the, <laughs> the city did his ass just dancing around like a like yeah a, it was it was, it was way it was way before those uh, Tim Pop Tim Pop we, we've got a, we've uh-huh. got a never ending chance we've got a never ending chance for Catch Your Snoice who's our Dutch centre forward and what it is the Dutch the Dutch fans if you if you look it up on on YouTube um, there's a song by a band called Snoller Bollocks so they will like them right <laughs> and it's um, and it's Not called Googling, Links. No. Called Links Rikes, I think it's called. It means like the, the, <laughs> it's like the left right song. So have a look, and there's the Holland fans all do it, and it's amazing. It's like a proper footy chant, you know what I mean? And it goes like it goes. <laughs> and then we go, Catch your snice is magic, and she plays for Everton, and then just repeat it. But we'll do it for like 20 minutes. So even if we're getting battered. Like we were getting swatted three nil against City last season, and we just started doing it for like twenty five minutes, and they scored, and we scored twice. <laughs> so what? it's like a proper, yeah, just like a little. Even if you're having the worst, you know, if you're getting battered, you can still do it, and all the fans get you know join in, and it's it's nice, nice atmosphere. Yeah, we need more imagination at the men's game, don't we? All of our <laughs> chance, we are the most simple one. I've got. To, I've got to mention this one. We got Heather Payne, who's not, who's, who's Republic of Ireland. She's a second coming of Seamus Coleman. And she's boss, like the proper, like right, right wing back attacking, like a little Jack Russell snapping at your heels all game. And um, we all of our songs are something to do with like the player or where they're from. So we, so we used Enya, you know, where um, sail away, yeah. sail away. <laughs> so it's just Heather Payne, oh, Heather Payne, that, right? Heather Payne. And we, and because she's always doing something, you just hear it constantly throughout the game. But now, whenever we refer to Heather Payne, Heather Payne, Heather Payne, we have to say her name three times. Like Candyman. Yeah. Heather Pain, Heather Pain, Heather Pain. Belton, you uh, when's when's the next when's the next women's game then, Pete? Just Playing Man United after. away tomorrow. Oh, when's the next home game? Right. Next week. Um oh God. I think I, I, we've got Arsenal coming up. I'm sure it's been changed though. Um it's, I think it's been changed for an early kickoff. I'll have to I'll actually have to double check to be honest with you. I think there's an international break coming up. There's always these mad oh, international okay. breaks during yeah, the season. Is, yeah. Yeah, does me head in. They're just constants, and it, it really pisses me off. To be honest with you, yeah. um, but yeah, we got United away tomorrow. I'm hoping we can. I'm hoping we can turn up there and and hopefully frustrate them. We we cost them the league at their place last season. They, they ended up losing the league by a couple of points, and See, their draw against us at home was what cost them it. So um, yeah, we'll be reminding the them of that tomorrow. That's the sort of thing we all ask for. Whether it's the best it, team, yeah. yeah. If we can't win. I want to stop you. You know, I want. We want to be the reason that someone else cries. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Join us it's in both. the pit of misery. <laughs> on that, on that bombshell, then. Uh, good luck to the women at United. Good luck to the fellas at Bournemouth. Um, Mike, we'll get to your sandwich question. It's my hot topic next time because I've got to go and have fish and chips now because it's Good Friday. Um, so yep. thanks to Pete, thanks to Dave, thanks to everyone who sent questions in. Uh, we'll catch you next time on Mailbag. <laughs>